If you're anything like me, you wanna know everything you possibly can about solar. And that's not just about an AC system where you're using microinverters, but I wanna know the DC system just as well as I understand the AC systems. So that's why I have purchased a 12.4 kilowatt solar array. So I have 31 Aptos solar panel sitting here in my shop that I'm gonna be installing on an in-ground mount system. And these are EG4 ground mounts. And I'm gonna concrete those in the ground. That's gonna be a nice series that I'm gonna do on that. So be sure to follow along. However, I'm just not sure whether I'm gonna be making that a microinverter system or if I'm gonna use a string inverter similar to this one that we have in testing right now. Because I do want the capability of purchasing whatever battery I would like. And you can see right here that we have an EG4 LL and that is a premium battery in my perspective. So I'm gonna be doing a full review on that battery a little bit later, so be sure to check that out when it comes available. But in today's video, we're doing a full review on the Sungo Power all-in-one string inverter. And that's a 5,000 watt, 48 volt uh, all-in-one. And I'm gonna be taking all of this apart and then showing you guys exactly how I have it wired here. I'll talk about other things that you're gonna need that you don't see in this setup, but we'll rewind everything and we'll start from the beginning. I'll show you how I got this wired up to this point, And then we'll talk about what that inverter is actually capable of and how big of a system that you can actually build with those inverters. Hi everyone, welcome. If you're new here, my name's Justin and what I talk about on this channel is everything related to solar. We're talking microinverters, string inverters, batteries, wiring, uh, racking systems, and DIY how to do it yourself. And if you're into that type of thing, you're in the right place. Now let's start off talking about the specifications of the inverter itself. This is a 48 volt Pure sine wave, 110 to 120 volt, 5,000 watt inverter. Compatible with 48 volt batteries, just like this EG4 that we have here. And you're permitted to actually connect up to six of these to create up to 30 kilowatts of output power. The integrated UPS will convert from one source of power to another source of power in 10 milliseconds. And what that means is, let's say we're powering from the grid and that power goes down, it will automatically switch over to this battery in 10 milliseconds, meaning it will never affect any of the appliances that you're using. And in power saving mode, the consumption is equal to or less than 50 watts. The max open voltage is 500 volts and the MPPT input voltage range is between 120 and 450. The maximum PV input is 5,500 watts at 22 amps. And the max output to charge the batteries can be up to 100 amps. The noise emissions are rated at or below 50 decibels. The overall dimensions are 16 and a half for the face plate, not an include the hanging bracket that would make the overall total 17 and a half. And the width coming in at 13 and three quarters and the depth is five and a quarter. And it weighs in at just 28.6 pounds. If you're interested in learning more in depth about the inverter, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below and I'm gonna add it to the forum, diysolarbuilds.com. If you have a question that maybe I don't answer in this video, be sure to post that question over there on my website and I'll definitely get it answered for you. Now this is for demonstration purposes only, but how I wired it was the negative, positive on the battery terminals, the PV in is a negative and a positive, and then we move over to the AC out, you put your ground, your neutral, and your line, and on your AC in, you'll do your neutral, your hot wire, which is your line wire, and your ground. Let's pause for about 30 seconds and talk about the wiring here. This is a basic setup. This is not anything that I would recommend to do for a permanent setup. The reason I'm wiring it right now is just to show you the functionality of the inverter itself. If you were gonna wire this for long-term, you're gonna need a lot of additional things like isolator, switches, breakers, fuses, 
and there's maybe other things depending on your electrical system. So don't consider this to be the how-to of wiring this inverter. This is the basic way of me being able to show you the functionality of the inverter itself. And now that we have that out of the way, I'm gonna explain how I wired it for this setup. That was sized to the actual amount of amperage that I was gonna be using for this test. So I used a 12 gauge wire because I'm only gonna use 20 amps to charge the battery. For your AC out, you have your ground, your neutral, and your line wire, and that feeds over to your load center. And this is the whole reason I wanted to show you how this is wired, because in most of these load centers, you have a green screw over there that bonds together your ground and your neutral and you do not want that with these type of inverters especially if you've already got a bond in your main panel you should not be doing more than one ground neutral bond in an entire electrical system so if you have that green screw you must remove it and you must add an additional ground bar over here so you can run all your grounds and have them separated from your neutrals very important and that's the whole reason I wanted to show you this wiring because this is a single phase inverter that means you're going to have one line wire coming in so you can only connect one side of the bus bar in your load center and if you would like to connect both of these and create a 240 volt system then you're going to need two of these bad boys and I think that gives you a basic rundown of how to wire the inverter into a load center I just wanted to make sure to bring to your attention that ground neutral uh, that was happening in the boxes. If you don't separate them, it needs to be separated. And I want to bring that to your attention. Now, in the Sun Gold power of this model here, there is no bonding screw inside the inverter. So you don't have to worry about that in the inverter itself. With two of those inverters, we could take the shop completely off grid, including this 50 amp plug, the 30 amp compressor plug, all the lights in the ceiling, the garage door openers, the TV and stove, the office lights, ceiling fan, this TV, coffee maker, and all of the 20 amp receptacles that we have throughout the entire building. And especially if we took the solar system on the roof to connect to those inverters. So you get the point that I'm trying to make here. This is a real deal solar solution for an entire house. And the reason that is, is because you can operate that on the grid, off the grid. You could pull power from the grid, supply the grid. You could pull power from just the PV system itself or you, just the batteries itself. The solar array feeds into this all-in-one inverter, charges the battery, anything left over goes to the grid. That is considered an all-in-one solution for your solar system. Then you would just need to determine how many of the inverters you'll need. I would recommend starting with two, create that 10 kilowatt of output power and expand from there. And if you're looking into purchasing one of these SunPower Gold inverters, be sure to check out the link in the description below where you can find the best deals. I'm also gonna leave a link to my website and you can go to my shop and you'll be able to find that same inverter. So it might be easier for you to find over there. Go to DIYSolarBuilds.com and you'll be able to find it in my shop. And if you have a question or a concern, or if you have a history with this inverter, be sure to leave that in the forum section and post a comment. So that way we can share it with the community and we can learn together the more that we post and try to communicate with one another, the more we start learning about these solar components. And that's the whole reason for the forum section on my website. And if you take time to do that, I'll promise you that I'll take time to answer your questions. So hopefully we'll chat over there and I'll catch you in my next video. Oh, don't forget, smash the thumbs up button for this video because it does really help me out a lot.